Hi everybody, today we look at the game animation sample. Something I recommend for everybody because that's a new way for Unreal to combine animations to make it quite easy to switch animations between characters. And as it's actually the Unreal uh, editor for Fortnite skeleton that we use here, I guess that's actually the future for animations. So definitely something that might be interesting for everybody to look at. What we want to do is we want to play around with this. And most importantly, we want to import a new mesh here in our case, the Jennifer from Wanderberg from The Witcher that we want to import into that sample. First thing where to get that mesh. Yeah, normally I go to Sketchfab. There are a lot of artists here. And here I found this page here. You see it in the description. That is the Jennifer of Wengerberg from Cradle of the Cube on a CC attribution license. So we download the FBX or object file and normally get a kind of archive like this that contains a source folder and a texture folder. Textures we will use a bit later. For first thing we need to do is rigging that mesh with some tool. Here's the textures. And let's go back here. Let's look at the source. Rigging that is something that is normally done by specialists, but here we use a very, very easy way using the actor core Accurig, link in the description. Just download it, it's free. And here you can very easily import object or FBX files and it will rig it quite automatically. If it's a standard human unit with five fingers, it's normally 100% exact. Sometimes you have to um, correct these buttons and kind of move them around a bit, um, but normally it's really, really good. And with every version it's get better. So that's, I think it's the easiest way to rig things today. What you get here is a character fully rigged. And if you see, for example, let's do some sports. You see all these stretchings and so looks actually quite, quite good. Even the smaller things like fingers, for example, are perfectly rigged, at least for most cases. So, okay, we have that. So let's export that to Unreal. So I go to export, target application is here, Unreal in our case, and let's export that. And it will export again in FBX. Just have a look here at the character height simply because if it's too far away from the standards, you can scale that in theory on import, but that can make a couple of problems. So normally it's preferable that you find a character that's about the right size. So I'm here in the sample project. You get it from the marketplace for free. And here, let's create a new folder for Jennifer, drag it in. And most of the settings that you see here should be actually default. We need a skeleton mesh, we import the mesh, the import the uniform scale here is 1.0 because she's 166 centimeter. It's fine for her, not that big, but okay. And yeah, let's scroll here a couple of settings, but they are actually all on default. The only exception is the um, one setting that is this use T0 as reference post that should be checked. That's not always checked, so try to control that one. Otherwise you will get some errors on import. When you import that, you get three files mostly. That's the skeleton mesh, that's the physical asset and the skeleton. And you get a couple of materials. Let's sort it a bit. So we put the materials here in an extra folder and let's put the textures also in a folder and import them first. So going back here, there was some textures, three in this case, sometimes a bit of a guessing game to get what texture belongs to where, but that's also quite easy to do really. So getting back, to the materials and shifting them to the right folder. We can open them and then let's guess around what texture goes to what material. So I open that. What you also might be, yeah, might be helping to open is the skeleton mesh because the moment you update one of the materials, you will see how the mesh updates. So if you're really unsure where to get what, you can just uh, do some fancy colors in one of the um, base colors and then you will see easily what is covered by which material. So here I have obviously the kind of armor that she has, applying it here to the base color. Quite often you have more things like specular roughness or metallic. In our case we just have the base color and you can set a default value for all others if it's too plastic-like. Here are the hairs, yeah, okay. So let's close that. We have luckily a material especially for hairs, so just drop it in. Replace the parameter that is there, and now we have hairs. Might be a bit glossy, but okay. Okay, looking good. And now we have the skin. 
let's put that on the head. That's where most people have their skin. Okay, nothing. Okay, looks also good. The eyes are not still missing. They're a bit ghostly, so I expect they are part of that texture. So let us see. Yeah, looking good. Okay, still a bit plastic-like, um, but fully textured, fully rigged. So we can actually go to next phase, phase thinking about how to integrate that character into the animation sample. So let's save everything here and go to the next step. You see the animation, uh, the presentation that I have here um, in the links below. You can use that and just go through it step by step. What we need here is a UE4 mannequin. We need a rig and we need the IKE retargeter, simply because IKE rig always exports as UE4 at this point of time at least. We copy it here to our Jennifer folder and rename the IKE rig and the IKE retargeter because that's easier to find. And we actually need quite often this IKE retargeter name because it's used as a tag in various things. We see that later. So renaming it here to Jennifer. Okay, so that is step one. Let's open them, starting with the IQ rig. IQ rig is just here, this preview skeleton mesh that we don't want, we want our skeleton from Jennifer. And what is great here, you see here, this yellow quadrants from the rig, that's perfectly fitting, so that looks quite good. Second thing is here the IQ retargeter. Um, the target at the moment is UE4 mannequin, we don't want that, we can want our rig that we just created. And then you actually see here these two target and source um, skeleton meshes and yeah let's put her a bit on the left so that is easier and now you see yeah that animation looks good so the rig is working and we have that all imported meaning that is already done so next thing now we have to couple the whole thing with the animation game simple things for that we need this name of the IKEA retargeter because that is used as tech and used as key in a couple of scenarios you go to blueprint here and look for generic and you see this animation blueprint generic retarget. That one has a variable called IKE retargeter map. And in that map, we need a key and a value being the key is exactly what we copied here, the name of the IKE retargeter. And the value is actually the IT, IKE retargeter itself. So selecting it here, or oh, Jennifer, okay. So we have the key, that is the that is the name of the IK retargeter and the IK retargeter itself. And we need that key because that is also a tag to the skeleton that we push in there. These two things need to be combined, otherwise the whole thing is not working. It might be that they are changing that later. At the moment, it's a manual step that you have to do. Good, next step. Let's go here and think about here in the retargeted characters, you have these CBP, sandbox characters for everything. We still need the UE4 mannequin one that is already kind of tailored for us. So we copy it to our folder, uh, renaming it to find it again. So UE4 not anymore, but that's Jennifer in the future. And let's open it. So what we have here is the base mesh. This is this orange mannequin that's invisible normally. And we have that skeleton child mesh. And that is where our skeleton mesh will come in. So here, looking for Jennifer, going in here. And yeah, anime, anime class should be animation blueprint generic retarget. So that's already set, that is fine for us. And you also see the materials, that's mostly it. Next thing that we have to do, I mentioned this tag that we need, and the tag needs to be coupled to the right skeleton mesh. So meaning it needs to be here on the child skeleton mesh. And that at the moment sits on the UE4 mannequin, but as I said, we need here this name of the IQ retargeter that we're using. So deleting that one and filling in our Jennifer ring. That's it. Good. In the viewport, uh, quite often it actually does not update for whatever strange reason. Um, check the visibilities, as I said, the core or the, the parent um, mesh should be not visible, whereas our Jennifer mesh should be visible. And um, still, it quite often does not update. Simple thing is just closing it and opening it again.
I opened it again and now you see actually our Jennifer as it should be, looking at the parent mesh, looking at the visibility, still invisible. Let's actually make it visible for a short moment simply because here you have the chance to adjust the new mesh character, our Jennifer, to exactly the old one. So it should be on the same height and it should of course look in the same direction. Sometimes depending on the model, that's not the case. That is something that you would have to correct here. If you're satisfied, then it again goes invisible. And of course our um, skeleton mesh, our Jennifer should stay visible. So that's it actually for this CBP sandbox character blueprint. Now the last thing that we have to do for this special game sample, not in your own game, I guess, is registering it in a widget. The widget is something available that I directly on the beginning and you see here a couple of buttons, a button for each of the skeleton mesh that are here in the game. Quite a lot of them, Epic did a great job there. I would say we just take one, control C, control V, and just copy it and paste it. And here changing the sandbox character blueprint to our Jennifer. You see the preview already, it's there, meaning it should already work if we start it and go to this game animation widget, we can take that widget, I put it here on the top right, and we can switch easily between all the characters that are in game just with a click of a mouse, very, very comfortable. There are other things to do here, like the frame rate testing, the time scale testing, um, different draws and so on and so on. So that is really understanding what kind of animation patterns are used here. That is something that will all, um, I guess, um, give us a lot to do for the next month and years simply because that I guess will be the standard for animations and you see now the standard coming with such a lot of different locomotion options that you really can cover quite a lot in your game just running around and jumping and climbing to things. So I think that is actually a very very nice development epic guiding us to more than 500 animations with this game sample is also something nice so I think we will definitely continue here. I hope that helps us always and see you soon. Bye.